Welcome to the wrap-up presented by AT&T. Live from Cleveland, Ohio, we have a national champion for the Women's NCAA Tournament. It is South Carolina winning it for the third time in the last seven years. They take down Iowa 87-75 to become the 10th undefeated champion in Women's NCAA Tournament history. As we welcome you courtside inside Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, we have got a great cast of characters here. Lachina Robinson, Kelly Gramlich, I'm Sam Ravitch, and a national champion, Tahina Pow Pow. I, I gotta start with, with this, Tahina. When you transferred over from Oregon, I gotta imagine this is what you envisioned. How does it feel now that you're living it out? Oh man, it's such a great blessing to be part of. I'm so happy to be here. The emotions haven't sunk in yet, but there's a lot of tears of happiness going around. Well, your performance was spectacular. 14 points in the national championship game. What was the key to your success out there today? Doing what I needed to do. Doing what my teammates needed me to do, and that's to shoot the ball, and that's what I did today. And man, I love my teammates. They, they have confidence in me and they trust me, so I had to knock it down for them. Tahina, speaking of that, I mean, this team, it feels like everyone buys into their roles. Everybody wants the collective to succeed. What did you learn about this culture when you first showed up that makes this program so successful? Now we had to adjust to each other a little bit. Um, it hasn't always been like this, but um, when it feels like this, we want to want to do it every day. And just to buy into the culture that Coach Daly, um, you know, did, it's, it's something that everyone wants to buy into. And she teaches discipline and locking in, and that's what we did. And we're just really happy to cap off a perfect season. Your teammate, Raven Johnson, set up on the stage there. Revenge tour over, <laughs> which I think is the perfect way to kind of put this into context. But, I mean, uh, you go from your coach to, to your players on your team. It just feels like everybody was moving towards the same goal the entire season. Take us back to the summer when you guys all started this journey. And now you get to experience it together. But let, let's start back there and what it started out like. Man, if you would have told us that we would be undefeated and winning national championship, I wouldn't have believed you. Wow. It was a lot of work we had to do. We had to grow a lot. We had to grow up a lot as a team and as individuals. And I'm just super proud of our team for, you know, coming together and having the main goal. And that was to win a national championship. And now we're a national champion. Watching the first half of this game, I'll tell you, my mother called me on the phone and said, <laughs> I'm not worried. You guys were down. She said, Dawn's going to get them together. And uh, honestly, all season long, whenever you guys have gotten in trouble, teams have come back after making big runs. You just have this composure about this team. What happens in the second half to the game, Cox, that you're always able to come out on top? And we know that we're a third quarter team. You know, we can be down one, down 10, but coming on the third quarter, we can definitely push it on them. And, you know, our depth also speaks to that. And just being able to tire these opponents out, that's what happened this year. And we just capped off a perfect season. Yeah, you did. Uh, the three-point line was huge for you guys. You knocked down eight threes, shot it, you shot it really well. And this team, the way they're able to put people away with that three ball, did you feel like this team could be that good from three when you go back? I know you were, but going back to the summer, did you feel like that could be a strength? Oh, absolutely. Everyone was in the gym. Everyone was in before practice. Everyone was after practice. You know, shout out to our coaching staff. They poured so much into our lives and people don't realize that. But they've done so much for us and we're so grateful for them. And, you know, shout out to also my teammates. They, they put in the work and uh, it came to fruition today. Speaking of your teammates, we'll let you get out of here. I know you want to celebrate really uh -huh. soon. Your freshmen came up huge for you guys, the young players. Uh, Malaysia Fulwali, of course, and Tessa Johnson hit some huge shots. Talk about them and maybe talk about the future of this South Carolina program. Yeah, no, we call them the rookies. Um, you know, the, fresh, the freshies came in, now we call them the rookies. But for them to step up so big on a big stage and a big platform, what they did, it's amazing. Um, I knew that their confidence was going to, you know, come to fruition, and that's what it did today. They did their best, and man, they did so much for us, and I'm just really happy to see what their future holds. Last one for you. I know you're going to go back to the locker room and celebrate. I'm sure you're going to look at your phone and see a bunch of texts and calls. Who's going to be your first call or text message? My family. They've been throughout my journey, my whole journey here. They've been loving every part of it, and I'm just, I'm just really excited to talk to my dad as well. I know he's very emotional. Shout out to dad and mom, love you all, but I'm just really happy to be here and happy to celebrate. Congratulations and go celebrate with your team. Yes, thank you guys. Congratulations. I'll take this from you. Yeah, thank you so much. You Appreciate it, yeah. That's a, hey, that's a good picture. So, excellent stuff from Tahina Pow Pow. We really appreciate her joining us. After South Carolina 
wins the national title, 87-75. Hapow had 14 points, Cardoso had 15. Chloe Kitts came up huge for this team with 11 points as well. Uh, I don't know, I mean, this was a, this was a really well-played game between both sides, but your early reactions to what this means as a legacy for South Carolina. Well, LaChina has to start because LaChina absolutely called this. You so did, go you ahead. Did LaChina, go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, South Carolina did what they've done to teams all season long, is wore them down with so much depth, with their rebounding ability. I think rebounding is 51 to 29, so they were on the boards. And look at how well they shot the three. 42%, yeah. eight for 19. That's Iowa's mark, right? That's what they're known for. And so there was just so many aspects of the game that South Carolina dominated. And I'll be honest, Iowa had me concerned in the first few minutes of the game, the first quarter. Um, you know, my prediction was in trouble because Kaitlin Clark and company came out ready to go. But over time, the depth of South Carolina, all the different ways they can hurt you. And I go back to the freshmen because pregame, I said, my Lasia Full Wiley was going to be a calming factor. And when she came into the game, they really started to relax. Tessa Johnson with her 19 points. I mean, that's not easy to do as a freshman on this big stage. Uh, it's amazing what they did, right? It just seemed like they played with no fear. All of these people in here, 20,000 people and millions watching at home, and those two freshmen came up so big for them. Well, it's because those freshmen, are they don't have to play well every single night, right? They have so much depth that they know that they can just come in there and provide a spark, do what they do well. And then Tessa Johnson was just phenomenal. And the three-point line was huge. This South Carolina team, that's why I asked Pow Pow that, from last year to this year. I mean, night and day. And Iowa didn't shoot it that well. But last year, that probably would have been enough. This year, it's not with how South Carolina shot the ball. And the rebounding. I mean, we talked about it. We said, you just kind of have to hold your own. And towards the end, as Iowa got worn down, the O boards were huge. Cardoso, I mean, that rebounding. South Carolina, to me, is the best rebounding program. I know you're talking about Maryland, but they're just phenomenal when it comes to the boards. 18 offensive rebounds for South Carolina compared to seven on the other side for Iowa. I do want to talk about Iowa here and Caitlin Clark. We'll, we'll talk a lot more about South Carolina as our show goes on. But even Dawn Staley, as she's accepting the trophy, makes a statement yeah. to say that Caitlin Clark has grown the game of women's yeah. basketball. I thought that was a really important message to share, not only the South Carolina fans, the Iowa fans, and the basketball world at large. What did you take of that? Yeah, Dawn said she's one of the goats of our game. Yeah. But that's who Dawn Staley is, pure class. But she's absolutely right. Kaitlyn has completely changed the landscape for women's basketball, not even in just in terms of its popularity, but even the way she plays the game. Now little girls and boys are at home trying to hit the logo three. Yes, we got Steph Curry, but now we got a Steph Curry on the women's side. But, you know, when you look at Kaitlyn's performance today, Kelly and I agree she would have to hit the 35-point mark fell just short of that at 30. I thought she had to expend a lot of energy in the first half. And again, South Carolina, the way they can wear you down defensively, I just thought in the second half, Iowa just did not have enough. I agree, LaChina. And first thing about Dawn Staley, I mean, Dawn Staley is just the perfect face of women's basketball, Every, the way she handles everything. Yeah. But I thought that was so classy. I, I thought there were a lot of coaches that wouldn't have done that. Um, and it just shows her understanding of the moment and just the bigger picture and, and what Caitlin has done. The rating for this game is probably going to be crazy. Now, obviously, South Carolina played a big role in that as well and, and their dynasty that they're building. But the first five minutes, LaChina, they didn't really face guard her. And I'm thinking, what's I going know. on? I was, I was surprised. And then the media timeout hit. Don adjusted, and really, Caitlin had 18 in the first quarter and then 12 in the rest of the game. Struggled a bit. I thought the, the combination of South Carolina's depth and the way they guarded her, making her a driver. She can drive, but that's not where she can hurt you the yeah. most. Yeah. And when you have that size, I was so good at passing in the interior, but they have size at, on every line, South Carolina does, and it just wore them down. But overall, a great game plan defensively from Carolina. 30 points, eight rebounds, five assists for Caitlin Clark. And you did off say night, it. Off, off night. Off night, right? You did say 35. It yeah. wasn't quite there, but... They started with Bree Hall on her, and Raven Johnson, I thought there was a crucial play at the end of that uh, second quarter. Yes. Raven Johnson gets that steal and takes it down the other way, and it turns into an 11-0 run from the end of the second to the start of the third. It, it just yeah. felt like that was an insurmountable lead at that point. Well, Kelly, you know, you played guard. When you get your cookies taken, 
it kind of shakes your confidence. The word shakes your confidence. And I think it did that absolutely for Kaylin Clark in that moment. And it just signals to the other South Carolina Gamecocks, like, we need to press up. Don't be afraid of Caitlin Clark. And after that, things really change. Yeah. And the difference, too, Sam, Raven Johnson, I thought, did a great job defensively. She was one for ten from the floor. But it didn't matter because she impacted the game so much defensively. When you look at a UConn, they needed Nika Mule to score, and she was pretty tired. South Carolina didn't need that. They have so many other options that Raven Johnson could really lock in on guarding Clark. Let's turn the conversation over to Camilla Cardoso, yeah. who was just named the most outstanding player here in the national championship game. She finished with 15 points, 17 rebounds, and also a couple of assists. She did play in the fourth quarter of this game. They needed her to play in the fourth quarter of this game, but your overall impression of what she did, not only tonight, but also on Friday night. I mean, she was a key for this team. She's an immovable force. Yeah. Like, you cannot get her out of the paint. and. You know, she just does a really good job of anticipating rebounds. Um, she's active, and even though she's most big girls at 6'7", can't move and rebound out of their area. She actually can. She's got good mobility. She'll fight for position. And even when she doesn't get the rebound, she is causing the defense to have to focus on her so much that her teammates get in on the action. No one else had 6'7 in this game. No one else had what I think is a lottery pick in the WNBA draft. Well, Caitlin on the other side, but other than Caitlin Clark, she was the most dominant player in college basketball this year. And I thought Cardoso affected everything Iowa did once they got inside the three-point line. Just yeah. defensively, even on plays where she didn't get a block or a deflection, she's there. And you have to change what you do. And I remember vividly, this is a little bit of a throwback, I forget what year it was, but when it was announced on Twitter that Camila Cardoso was transferring from Syracuse to South Carolina, I remember pulling over. <laughs> and he's saying, I need to tweet because it's a wrap. Like, with, with South Carolina having Camila Cardoso, and, you know, of course, LSU did what they did last right. year, but I knew Don was going to develop her and just the players around her. Yeah. She was already so good, but developing into what she's become. Like, I love what you said, LaChina. She was the second most dominant yeah. player and probably on both ends the most dominant yeah. in the whole country. How about Chloe Kitts? 11 yeah. points for her. I mean, double double. Yeah, she took advantage. I think they 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 played hard on Cadoso. Sometimes they brought two, and Chloe Kitts was the recipient of some of those yeah. offensive rebounds and second chance points. The other stat that is shocking from this game, when you look at the bench points. Oh yeah. I mean, 37 to nothing, South Carolina outscoring Iowa in the bench points. You know, I, we felt like it would probably be something like that. The goose egg is is tough for Iowa and not having Molly Davis, you know, that was another depth piece yes, for them. Yes, absolutely. But I didn't think Iowa was going to get a lot of bench points, but for South Carolina to get over 30 is huge. Yeah. And it just shows the depth in those freshmen stepping up. 100%. I mean, everyone needs an X factor, right? Like you need someone who's not in the starting lineup that if things go awry or you start to hit a lull, you can put them in the game and they give you a little fire. That's who my Malaysia Full Wiley was. That's who Tessa Johnson was. Nothing for Iowa on that side for Lisa Bluter. And so that lack of depth and even just the ability to change up the mood or feel of a game was was missing. And I thought that Bluter tried to do what LaChina was saying, use some of her bigs, yeah. but it just didn't really work because it hampered Iowa a bit offensively. Yeah. And they couldn't do much more against Cardoso than Stolke. Yeah. So that depth didn't really help. Yeah. As you guys are looking behind us, we see some of the net cutting ceremonies going on. This is the third national championship in seven years for South Carolina. I am sure that words like destiny are going to be thrown out, certainly legacy building, but when you look at this South Carolina team, compared to the other two that won titles in the last couple of years, what do you think you remember most about this iteration of South Carolina? That this one was shocking, the way they did it. I didn't expect this team to go undefeated. They just lost five players, right. five members of the starting lineup, and all drafted to the WNBA. So the other teams, when you have Asia Wilson, it was due. When you had Aaliyah Boston, it was due. This year's team was a surprise for me, in particular the way they did it with their freshmen being the best players on the floor off of the bench in the national championship game, it just speaks to Don's recruiting, just the influx of talent, the readiness of the freshman class in women's basketball right now, period, is yeah. through the charts. So this one for me was the surprise championship of all that Don has.
Yeah, I would agree with that. I think this maybe is her best coaching job. Like, honestly, yeah. when you look at the roster and look at what they lost, none of these starters started last year in the Final Four, which is crazy. And I'm just blown away by their culture because in this day and age, if you're a player that's good enough to start and you're not starting, you're out. Like, yeah. you are gone. You're in the portal. And South Carolina has so many players that are willing to kind of wait their turn but also be ready yes. in big moments like we saw today. Really impressive stuff. You see the emotions, too, uh, for Dawn Staley and all of these players. She's got the, the SC Top 10 uh, <laughs> swag on there. I, I thought it was really interesting, too, hearing from Tahina Pow Pow. Even she admitted that she couldn't have imagined this when everybody got together and all the new players, the new faces came in. I, I just thought that was interesting. Like, a, a player of her caliber coming into a new program, and they do have so much talent, but even she couldn't have ever imagined what would have happened today. Yeah, I mean, it, it speaks to the player development that there is in South Carolina. And I know Kelly talked about this, just like everyone getting better, whether you needed to hit shots, if you're Raven Johnson, or you needed to get stronger and more powerful on the inside, if you're Camila Cardoso, everyone got better through the course of the year. And you hear coaches say it all the time, and it feels like coach speak. It's like, oh, we just want to be playing our best basketball at the right time of the year. Well, South Carolina's time of the year was all year. Like, right. they are undefeated. And there were some lulls in there, here and there. But once they started to click and understand what everyone's role was and what the expectations were, that's what you call culture. Right. Right? That you come in there to win. You may not see how it's going to happen when you come in the door, but by the time you leave, you've got a championship trophy. Right, for sure. And I think with this team, you know, we talk about the surprise. The talent on this team is, is unbelievable. The recruiting that Don Staley has yeah. done and where everyone can truly shine in their role is impressive. I mean, I think what's scary is you lose Cardoso, right? Right, right. <laughs> Who else, right? Yeah, I right. mean, you should bring everyone back. Portal, we'll see, right? But that's what's, I think, unreal. And we've talked about this as a dynasty. I think it's fair to say, but you thought maybe Asia Wilson, Aliyah Boston, those would be more the dynasties, maybe winning back to back. Perhaps it's this group, and yeah. it's more with their depth and just wh who they can play one through ten. Yeah. It was just, it was crazy. Iowa was shooting it like north of 60% from three in the first half, and yet they still go into the break down three. I, they, yeah. It's just almost like it's too much to overcome, but that's exactly what South Carolina has done, and they did it all year long, an undefeated season, just the 10th team to ever accomplish that feat. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our game-changing connections presented by AT&T. We talked about it a little bit with Tahina Pow Pow, but the freshmen were the story today. Malaysia Full Wiley and Tessa Johnson, they combined to score or assist on 40 points. They held Caitlin Clark to 0 for 4 from the field. Tessa Johnson, a team leading and game, or not game high, second uh, leading scorer in the game, obviously behind Caitlin Clark. But Tessa Johnson had 19 points and, and for a guard. So efficient, seven for 11 from the floor, Kelly. What, what impressed you most about her performance? I love her game. She's so poised. She's so mature. She does not take bad shots. She has a feel for what, what South Carolina needs on a certain possession. She remind, and I know it's different because Carson was a, a senior, but she was almost the Jasmine Carson of this game. From last year's national yeah. title, the LSU win over Iowa, that player that comes off the bench that you're not really expecting to have 15, but they are the game breaker and they are the X factor. And that's what Tessa Johnson was. And this freshman class in the entire game, wow. Latina, when you think of Juju and Hannah and all these different freshmen, it's it's really hard to imagine how good this game's going to be with those people. Oh, yeah. And I said this during the game to someone that every time Malaysia Fulwali touches the basketball, I'm expecting something really yes. incredibly yeah. impressive to happen. Right. Like, we, we talk about the greatness of a player being your ability to make contested shots. I don't care how many players there are between her and the rim, she's going to find a way to get there. That is a special quality, her athleticism. She plays in the air. She's so comfortable with the basketball. Like, the fact that we get three more years, knock on this hardwood, of my full Wiley to watch is going to be, uh, I mean, I, I'm just so excited for her future. And her playing with Tessa Johnson. Yeah. Right. Like, those two, they complement each other well, and, of course, all the other pieces, but yes. it's crazy. Let's not forget. This game started with a 10-0 run yes. by Iowa. And oh, by the way, the first punch. South Carolina, this is a ridiculous stat. South Carolina is now 11-0 in games in which they have trailed by 10 or more points. <laughs> 
It's well, is that this season? In, it's the longest streak in division. Well, there is a, there's got to be an O. Yes, yeah, that makes sense. Right. But that is crazy that they have trailed by 10 or more that many times in an undefeated season. Yeah. It really, I think, trickles down to Dawn. And you mentioned this thing earlier, how she just doesn't panic. Yeah. And even that 10, I would have called a timeout earlier, but that's why I'm not a Hall of Fame coach because right. she trusts her team and she has enough vets where they feel like they can weather the storm. And you asked what's the difference between the other championships yeah. and this one. She was panicking in, in those last two. Really? Yes, absolutely. Like, I, I think, and when I say panicking, meaning she was going to call a timeout. She wasn't okay. going to let them play through their, their and Clark's final collegiate game. She will be going on to the next level very soon. Very likely the number one overall pick in the upcoming WNBA draft. Obviously, it's not the way that she would have liked to finish her career, Kelly. But again, I, I, I go back to what Dawn said, and I don't think anybody could have said it better for what she meant to the game. I, to me, she is the GOAT. I, I, and I think everyone's going to have their own opinion about it. But for what she meant to the game, not only what she did on the floor, for, you walk around this building today, all of the young women, the young girls who are watching. And young Caitlin, boys. And young boys. It's, and grown men. Yeah, and grown everybody, women. Everybody, everybody. Grandmas. It was, this, and it still was a home crowd for Iowa today. It was. I mean... What do you think you'll remember about Caitlin Clark? And what will you miss most about watching her? Gosh, I just think she changed the game. We've never seen anything like her, and that's not hyperbole. We have not seen a women's basketball player like her. I think I'm willing to say she's the greatest offensive player of all time, kind of what we were saying before the game. Um, you know, there are a few things she could have done tonight that maybe could have taken Iowa over the top. To say that in a game where you have 30 is sure. just crazy. She's changed how we talk about what a good game is. Like, that's her impact. Yeah. She almost had a triple-double against oh. UConn, and we were saying, eh, maybe not her best. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable what she's done. I'm so excited. I know China's going to have a front-row seat to watch her in the W. It's going to be phenomenal. But also just the impact, as Don Staley said, the numbers that we are seeing, the casual fans, my right. father-in-law, who never watched women's right, basketball, right. and subscribe to different places so he could watch Caitlin Clark. Like, that that's the impact on the casual fans. Yeah, she's played the game in a way that we've never seen. Like, I have been watching, covering women's basketball for over two, well over two decades. Um, and just the fearlessness she plays with. Mm -hmm. The fact that she went out on her own on a basketball court and decided that her go-to shot was going to be from the hash mark. <laughs> that takes so much courage and fearlessness. And credit Lisa Bluter for allowing that to be her thing, right? Um, she has bought tremendous popularity to our sport. She's so gracious in how she carries herself. She understands and respects the history of women's basketball. I mean, I, I could not have picked out a better face of our game right now in the one in the college space than Caitlin Clark. Um, she just has really bought in so many people. My stepmom was texting me at halftime, you know, talking about how Caitlin was just so fearless and how much she loved watching her play. And this woman, you know, she barely watches college. She watches a lot of W, same with what you, what you were saying. Um, but it, it, look at look at this audience. Yeah, it's like incredible. look at look the viewership is going to be through the roof. Crazy. We're talking about millions of play, people watching women's basketball, and Caitlin Clark has a lot to do with this instant growth. Yeah, and again, she will continue on playing. We're talking about it like she's not going <laughs> yeah, to no. keep playing basketball. She will go on to the next level. Um, and continue to, I'm sure, fill up arenas left and right. Um, just back to South Carolina. We're going to wrap up our show in just a little bit as the Nets have been cut down. South Carolina winning the national title over Iowa here in Cleveland, Ohio, Kelly. Um, just your last thoughts, not only on South Carolina and what they did this year, but moving forward. Don Staley and South Carolina, they're not going anywhere. This is going to be a team likely that will be favorites to come back here again. Yeah, I, I, going undefeated is truly remarkable. To be able to bring it at that level every single time you play a game and to not slip up is I, I just can't imagine how difficult that is. And then to do it and win a game where I thought the pressure was on them to get it done, and they absolutely did that and they delivered. And then when you look forward, like we said, Cardoso is going to the W. Yeah. Beyond that, they're going to return quite a few pieces, and it feels like this team could – I mean, I think they're going to be the early favorites to go back-to-back. Back. Yeah. But to our – kind of the point in the future of the game, yes, Caitlin's going to move on to the W, but there are so many talented young players, and I think there's a lot of teams that are going to rise up, a Southern Cal. I think a Notre Dame's going to be really good next year. That can challenge South Carolina, but it, I think it's good for women's basketball to have that stalwart. You had UConn, and that brought a lot of attention. Who's going to beat them? I think we have South Carolina now. I think it's good for the game. Yeah, I think it's great to see what Don Staley is doing. Um, 
because it's very inspirational for every other college women's basketball program sure. that thinks they can't get here. Um, South Carolina, right? This isn't Tennessee. Yeah, this isn't point. UConn. This isn't. So every other program is going to look at what's been done in the blueprint and feel like I can do what Don Staley did, right? Bring a team and they're not going to be on Don Staley. Now you don't have Olympic <laughs> rings, but you took a team or you took a, a school that no one saw having this level of success to what they've done in the last few years. It's just phenomenal. It's inspirational. They'll absolutely be the favorites coming into next year. Um, and, and I just can't wait to keep watching these freshmen. Nothing against the sophomores and the juniors, <laughs> but um, it just tells you that women's basketball is here and is exciting. It'll be going for a long time with the young talent. Standing on the court here in Cleveland, just witnessing an amazing game. Both teams played to their strengths, mm -hmm. I think. You know, with Iowa making their threes, South Carolina rebounding, pounding the paint. Um, when you look forward to next year, we keep talking about growing the game and pushing the game forward. What do you think, what's one or two storylines that you're looking forward to an early, early storyline for next season? I love that we're already talking about next year in April. That means we really have arrived yes. if that's what we're doing. Well, I think South Carolina defending champs. Um, how does this roster look without Cardoso? That's going to be really interesting to me and how they build. Um, like I said earlier, we talked about Juju Watkins at Southern Cal. Can she take that next step and really get Southern Cal over the hump to a Final Four? And then it may be my ACC showing, LaChina, but I think Notre Dame yeah. could legitimately win a national championship. They have to shore up some depth in their front court. But those guards, Hannah Hidalgo, Olivia Miles, if Westfeld comes back, watch out for the Irish. I think my big storyline is, is the freshmen, <laughs> like I said, like <laughs> yeah. the national – class of freshmen, but I'm always really intrigued by what teams will make the biggest jumps, yeah. right? Um, I think Texas with Madison Booker could really be a, a, a team that makes a huge step if they get Rory Harmon back healthy. They were already a number one seed without her. Um, what will Juju Watkins do? We saw the crying in the, in the press conference. So what would this offseason mean for her? Like there's a couple of, and not that Texas hasn't been one of the traditionally successful programs, but just what, who will make the biggest stride? Like will one of those teams be here in the final four next season? I don't I think Iowa can make it back here next year. Um, miracles happen, but I feel pretty confident saying that this spot will be open next season. Um, you know, my goodness, <laughs> Gino Oriama just got a commitment from the yeah. number one recruit in the yeah. 2024 class and, and Sarah Strong. So they could absolutely be back in this position. I don't know about the Wolf Pack, you know, out, out of the ACC, but um, who will be that next team that, like South Carolina, they didn't think they were going to be here. No, they year. didn't. And like Iowa, I didn't think they were going to be yeah. here at the beginning of the year. Who's going to surprise us by playing for a national championship? I will just say, before we head out of here, it has been an amazing women's college basketball season. Yes. And getting to share it with you guys has been awesome. Getting to witness history here today, I think that's what we got to do. And all of you at home, I'm sure, who enjoyed watching what was an excellent basketball game between two teams that were, look, it could have been going anyway. Yeah. Iowa could have won this game. Uh, if they had maybe gotten 45 out of Kaylin Clark. But uh, <laughs> nevertheless, it is South Carolina taking home their third national title in the last seven years. Impressive stuff from Dawn Staley. You can see the emotion, too, on all of the players' faces after they were uh, announced national champions. And they also said, we're going to Disney World. That's where South Carolina will be going very, very shortly. For LaChina Robinson, Kelly Gramlich, we also appreciate Tahina Pow Pow joining us. I'm Sam Ravage. Thank you so much for watching the wrap-up presented by AT&T. We'll see you next season, everybody.